welcome to my channel. My name is Anita and I am designer and maker behind yarns. In today's video I'll be showing you how to make these adorable baby mittens. This pattern is quite simple and easy, even if you are a beginner, you work up this project in no time. I'll be including a written pattern for 5 different sizes as well. First we'll talk about the materials you'll be using for this project. Here we have corset weight yarn size 4. And this particular yarn that I'm using is from the brand Spago yarn and it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. I'll have all of the materials linked in the description box as always. As you can see, this yarn is so soft and it is amazing to work with. But you can use any versa weight yarn you have and for this size we're doing today, you'll need 50 grams of yarn. Then you'll need 4.5mm crochet hook. And if you are doing toddler size, you'll need 6mm hook as well. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, as well as a couple of stitch markers to help you with the count of stitches. In today's video I'll be showing you how to do a size to fit a child 12 to 18 months. And the other sizes you have linked in the description box down below. So for this size we'll start by chaining 31. Make sure you're not pulling too hard on that yarn so you don't end up with the chain too tight. If for any reason you'll have difficulties with this type of the stitch we'll be using today, you can watch my other tutorial that should pop up on your screen now where I explain this stitch in more detail. So now I'm just chaining 31 stitch total. Once you've chained 31, this is what your foundation chain should look like. Now for our first row, we'll be slip stitching 3 stitches first. So you're gonna go into your chain just like so, slip stitch 1, and then place your stitch marker here, since it's gonna be a bit hard to see these first stitches. Then slip stitch 2, slip stitch 3 and then for our next stitch we are going to yarn over and slip stitch and this is what you'll do until the end of the row so I'm just yarning over and slip stitching and once you finish this row you should have 3 slip stitches and 27 yarn over slip stitches that's gonna be 30 stitches total so go ahead and finish your row, pause the video and meet me back once you're done. Okay, once you're done with your first row, this is what you should have. Now for our next row, turn your work towards yourself and you'll have this front facing you, just like that. Then you twist your work a little bit and looking from the top, you're going to go into that back loop just like so and slip stitch. Place your stitch marker and then continue slip stitching until you have 15 stitches total. Okay, here we have our 15 slip stitches. Now we are going to continue by yarning over and slip stitching. And you're gonna do this for the next 12 stitches. So just yarn over and slip stitch 
12 stitches total. And finally, before you finish this row, you have 3 stitches left. And we are going to slip stitch those three stitches. So slip stitch one, two, and three. Chain one and turn your work. And this is what you should have after first two rows. Now the next row will be easy. Just as we did with our first row, we're going to slip stitch first 3 stitches on through that back loop and then place your stitch marker in that first stitch and now until the end we are going to continue yarning over and slip stitching. So 27 stitches more. 30 in total. And you'll be repeating this pattern alternating between rows 2 and 3 until you have total amount of 11 rows. So for one row we'll do 3 slip stitches and 27 yarn over slip stitches. And for the next row we'll do 15 slip stitches, 12 yarn over slip stitches and slip stitch last 3 stitches. And remember we're working into the back loop only throughout. You can now pause the video, do 11 rows and meet me back at the beginning of row 12. Okay, here's what your work should look like so far. So we've done 11 rows. And now for rows 12 and 13, we'll be doing slip stitches all the way working into the back loop only. So you're going to do your first stitch, place your stitch marker and then just continue slip stitching in the back loop only for the entire row. And do the same for the next row as well. So rows 12 and 13 should have 30 slip stitches each. You can now pause your video and meet me back at the beginning of our row number 14. Okay, we finished our two rows of slip stitches and this is how they should look like. And now for row 14 we'll be starting our thumb part. First you'll be slip stitching 17 stitches. Again, place your stitch markers if you're likely to miss on those first stitches. So now I'm just slip stitching until I have 17 slip stitches total. Okay, now that we have our 17 slip stitches, we are going to chain 8. And once you're done chaining, we'll start working down the back of our little chain. So not the front, but we'll turn it and start working into these loops right here. So these little bumps that you see. So insert your hook through that loop just like so and slip stitch. We'll do seven of these total all through that back bump.
And here we have our last slip stitch that we work into just like that. So you can see already that thumb part forming right here. And now we'll just continue slip stitching through that back loop until the end. We're gonna have 13 stitches more. So go ahead, finish this row and start row 15. Do 13 sti slip stitches and I'll meet you at the beginning of our thumb section right here. Okay, here we are at our row 15. We already did 13 slip stitches and now I'll show you how to do this thumb part for this row. So we'll be going around and working through these back loops of our slip stitches. But now you're going to yarn over and slip stitch. And we'll be working through these stitches right here. So yarn over and slip stitch through that back loop only. We'll be doing this all around and you should have total of 15 yarn over slip stitches. Make sure you don't miss this stitch at the top since that was our turning chain. It might be a little bit hard to see it, but we'll work into that stitch as well. And now we'll go down the other side of your chain, still working through that second loop only. And we'll do 7 more stitches. And this is what it should look like so far. Now we'll just continue slip stitching until the end of the row, 17 stitches more. So again, finish this row and start row 16, do 17 slip stitches. Pause the video and I'll meet you back at the thumb section again. Ok, here we are at our row 16 and we already did 17 slip stitches for this row. Now for the thumb part, we'll actually just continue slip stitching through that back loop only. And we'll do that all the way until the end of the row. Now for the next two rows, we'll just repeat these two rows we just did. So for row 17, we'll be repeating row 15, where we just changed the pattern for the thumb part and did 15 yarn over slip stitches. And the rest of the stitches will be slip stitching. And then for the row 18, just like we did for this row, all slip stitches. And you should have 45 stitches total. So go ahead, finish this row and do the next two and I'll meet you back to show you how to close this thumb part. Ok, here we are at our row 19 and this is what you should have after finishing rows 17 and 18.
So we already did our 13 slip stitches for this round. And now I'll show you how to close this thumb section. So first you'll just continue slip stitching for the next 8 stitches. Okay, these are my 8 slip stitches. Now connect these two parts just like so. And now what you want to do is go back to that previous stitch we did and grab that back loop only. So again this stitch right here and then you go into the back loop of the stitch on the opposite side. So this stitch right here. Yarn over and pull through and pull through again. And this is our first slip stitch and we'll be doing this for the next six stitches. So you have seven stitches total. So just go through those back loops on both sides and make sure you line them properly. Okay, this is my last slip stitch and we have our thumb section all closed up. Now we'll just continue slip stitching like we did so far. And if you lined everything properly, you should have 17 more slip stitches until the end of this row. So go ahead, finish this row, start the next one and do another 17 slip stitches. And we'll meet back at that thumb section again. Okay, here we are at our row 20. And we already did 17 stitches for this row. And I just wanted to show you how you go over that connection part. So you won't be working into that stitch that has already been worked into, but we'll go through that next available stitch and slip stitch and you can see how clean that looks like here. Now you go ahead and finish this row, slip stitching through back loop only. And then for the next 9 rows you'll do the same. You're gonna work back and forth slip stitching through back loop only. And in the end you should have 29 rows for the entire project. Pause the video now and meet me back after you completed 29 rows. So here's what you should have after you finished all the rows. I just want to show you how this pattern looks like and how clean those finishes are. The connection for this stamp is so seamless. Before we connect these two sides together, I just want to mention that this mitten we just did will be our left mitten. And the pattern for the right one will be just the same, but you'll be starting from the opposite side. And what I mean by that is you'll still be chaining 31, but your first row will be all slip stitches, as well as your next 10 rows. And then you'll be doing the thumb part, and then the front side of the mitten. So it's basically gonna look like this, with this being your first row, and then you'll be working towards the front side of the mitten. And you can see how that looks like here. As I said before, I have free pattern linked in the description box, so you can check on that too. Now we'll be connecting these two sides together. So the right side facing you, connect the two sides just like so. Then you'll find the first loop of your foundation chain and insert your hook through. And grab the loop from the opposite side and pull through. Now 
go into the next available loop of your foundation chain and into the back loop of the stitch on your last row. So this stitch right here yarn over and pull through. Now you can see that I'm grabbing my tails as well and that's just to avoid weaving that tail in the end. And since it can be a bit fiddly, you don't have to do it. You can just weave in that tail in the end. So I'm just slip stitching through every loop of my foundation chain as well as the back loop of the stitches of the opposite side. And now that I did a few stitches with that tail, I can let go and continue slip stitching with my working yarn only. So just take your time, make sure you don't miss any stitches. And in the end you should have 30 slip stitches. Pause the video and meet me back after you've closed this part completely. Okay, we're all done slip stitching and our two parts are connected. And you can see here how nice that looks. You can go ahead and cut your yarn leaving around 20 cm long tail. And now we'll start sewing that top together. Get your tapestry needle. and go back and forth through these end loops just like so. After you're done, pull on that yarn to make it a bit narrower toward the top. Now we'll just go back weaving our end more, to make sure it won't come out undone. Cut all the excess yarn and turn your mitten inside out. And your left mitten is all done. You can see how nice all the connections look like. You can fold this part or leave them a bit longer like this. So I went ahead and did the other mitten. I've also added a few details like my leather tag and this leather wrap to make sure those mittens won't be falling off. I am really in love with this design. It is so simple but the final results are amazing. And the best part is that you don't have to do the thumb section separately and then add them on and have so many ends to weave in. Like this, you do everything in one go and you have super clean finish. Then you have this foldable brim that you can leave it open like this for those really chilly days. Or just fold them to have that even cuter look. The written patterns that I did go up to the toddler size. 
but you can customize it and do even bigger sizes just by increasing the number of stitches and the number of rows. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in comment section below and I'll make sure to answer all of them. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell button so you don't miss any videos I post. That will help other people find my videos as well. And I would love to see your finished work, so make sure you tag me on social media when you post it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.